Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and today I'm going to be doing an overview of all the Sunshine State Young Reader Award nominees and I've got a guest star to help me introduce these today. This is the wonderful Miss T from my daughter's middle school. She is the media specialist there which basically means she's the school librarian but she does a lot of amazing and wonderful things at our school and we're so blessed to have her. She is more of an expert on the Sunshine State readers than I am so I wanted to invite her to help me introduce them. So today we are filming at Lake Alfred Public Library here in Lake Alfred, Florida. And I want to thank Linda and the staff here at the library for letting us film today. Uh, we appreciate them so much. First of all, let me tell you that these books are uh, nominated by a group called FAME. And Miss T is a member of FAME. So would you tell us what FAME is and what those letters stand for? <laughs> FAME stands for Florida Association for Media and Education and it helps support uh, reading for the young kids and uh, middle age and high school. Okay. Okay, and uh, things we do, we uh, get books like this, Sunshine State Young Reader books, and we encourage the kids to read them and vote on the book that they think should win an award at the end of the school year. These are the 15 books that are on the Sunshine State Young Reader Award nominee list. These are the books that are for 6th to 8th grade. There is another list of 15 books that are for 3rd to 5th grade. For this video, we are focusing on the books that are for 6th to 8th grade. And um, each year, the FAME group chooses these books. They take nominations from anyone, I believe, go online and, go and online. nominate a book. Yes. Oh, so after the books are nominated, then the list is announced, usually during the summer. Um, right before the end of the school year. Okay. No list. So this list was uh, actually announced right at the end of last school year so that if people want to, they can see the list online and they can start reading them over the summer, which is yes. kind of what I did. And then the kids are encouraged to read them all during the school year. And then towards the end of the year, then they vote. Instead of allowing an adult to select books that will win an award, we allow the students to select the books. But they must read at least three of the books. Okay, yeah, I remember my daughter last year had the opportunity to vote yes. for which one of these books uh, she thought was the best out of the ones that she had read. So uh, and then at the end of the school year, there's one winner that will be chosen out of all of these. But still, all during the school year, the kids are encouraged to read these books in particular. And then different schools can offer whatever incentives they want to get the students to read from this book list. So I've mentioned before on my channel that I'm reading all 15 of them. Last year I read about nine, eight or nine of them. And so this is my first year that I have gotten um, enough of the motivation to, to try to read them all. And I have 10 finished now and I'm on my 11th one. And Miss T usually reads them all too. So can you remember any in past years that stand out to you as being particular favorites of either yours or the students? One of the books I liked most was a book titled Variant. I can't think of the author's name right now. I think that was one of last year's books. Yes, that was one of last year's books. And it was the winner, too. Yes, it did win. And uh, one of the things that this young man uh, would try, was trying to go to school, he didn't have a family or anything, and they had him to go to a school where there were no adults. And But they went into school, but they could not come out. Wow. And they had a big wall where they were not to go over. And it's a very interesting book. I don't want to tell too much because I will Spoilers. tell Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the ones I did not read last year, so I definitely need to get to that one. That sounds like a good book. But, and I know that each state probably has their own list of uh, books that they choose from. And so I'm pretty sure most of these books are available worldwide. And um, you can, you know, buy them on Amazon or get them locally, some of them probably. So they're not just books that are available in Florida, and they're not just written by Florida authors. But the authors must be United States citizens. Oh, they are. Okay. Yes. I did not know that. So these have to be, these are books that are from United States uh, authors. All right. So one by one, we're going to show these books and uh, talk about them just briefly. I have already started filming reviews of each of these, and I will be uploading those onto my channel as I uh, finish them. But I wanted to get the overview done first. So um, let's get started and we'll show you each of the books. Okay, this is called Counting by Seven. It is by Holly Goldberg Sloan. Sloan. Now, this is a really good book. I read this one first and it is a contemporary book about a girl who is a genius. And it's 
really, really a great book. I highly recommend it. So check out the review that I uh, did on this book. Okay. We have another book that I think you would enjoy. And this book is The Eighth Day by Diane K. Salerni. Oh, let's tell me about this. This one is a fantasy book about a boy who can experience an eighth day of the week. And he starts experiencing this on his 13th birthday. And he comes to find out that there are some people who only exist on the eighth day. So it's very interesting and very mysterious. And I would probably call this a fantasy book. And it has ties to the Arthurian legends, um, that's like King Arthur and Merlin and Lady of the Lake and things like that. How would you like to have eight days a week instead of seven <laughs> days a week? I know, I think most of you teachers would uh, enjoy that eight day, wouldn't you? Yes, especially let it be a weekend. <laughs> yes, now you don't need another school day. <laughs> now we have another one. You know, we have a lot of storms in the state of Florida, and this is Eye of the Storm by Kate Missner. Okay, and this is actually a futuristic book set in uh, 2045. It takes place in Oklahoma, which is actually where I grew up. It's a very good adventure book. There's some mystery, and it's futuristic, so there's a lot of things that happen in this book that are very exciting. And if you like uh, books about storms and natural disasters, you might enjoy this, and also uh, futuristic type books, too. Now, one thing about the Sunshine State Young Readers books, they, uh, they, when they're selected, they try to get different categories of books, so kids will not just stick to one or two. Now, this one, Jack Strong, takes a stand. This is by Tommy Greenwald, and this is probably one of the funnier books in this uh, group of books, but it does have a serious undertone message about overscheduled kids. And so I think this is a really good one for parents to read because we need to make sure that we don't overschedule our children. But it's told in a very fun and comical way that I think the kids will, will enjoy. And it'll probably give them a few ideas too. <laughs> How many different things are you in? Are you in a sport? How many? Well, got to read this book to yeah. see if you are overscheduled. Now we have this one, Joe of Bones by Ben McKelson. Okay, he is an author that likes to write about boys who may be in trouble. Let's hear about this. Actually, and that is exactly what this one is about. It follows a boy who has um, just basically lost all respect for any adults or himself. And his mother sends him to his uncle for the summer. And his uncle takes him on a jungle adventure where he hopes he will do a little bit of growing up. And he does. This is a very good book. It has some, um, it's a contemporary book, but it also has some memories of World War II, so it reads a little bit like historical fiction. And uh, then it's got the excitement of the jungle. So about halfway into the book, I got to a point where I couldn't put it down, and I was just turning pages like crazy because it was so good. Do you have a troubled child? Are <laughs> you a troubled child? <laughs> If so, you, this is a must read Yes, and see if this might help you. Now we have this one. This is a Night Gardener by Jonathan Oxier. Would you like to take care of a garden at nighttime? <laughs> what does that mean? Let us hear. Well, actually, this is our ghost story of this year. It's, mm. uh, it's pretty creepy. I don't read a lot of ghost stories, but I did enjoy this one. And I would just recommend that you not read this one at night because that's when all the action takes place. And it's a little creepy. So we don't want you reading this at night and then mom will wake up because you're in there screaming. <laughs> wow. If you can't stomach it, don't get it. This is Project Jackalow by Emily X. Let's hear what this is about. Well, I have not read this one yet. In fact, we just got this in today. I was about to film the video without it, but I was so excited that it came in. And um, I read the synopsis. It is about a boy who's eccentric neighbor trusts him with a so-called mythological creature called a jackalope which is a bunny with razor sharp antlers and apparently a government agent shows up who has some other ideas about what should happen with this jackalope and so the boy has to protect jack from the government man who has some sinister dealings that he's uh, apparently doing so anyway i have not read it yet but it looks like a quick read and I think it'll be a lot of fun. And on Goodreads, it said that it was a hilarious, suspenseful adventure. Okay, do you have a pet that somebody else might want to investigate, dissect, or take away from you? Well, this might be the book for you. 
Okay, we have another one here that you may enjoy. This is The Secret of Rover by Rachel Ludowski. Now, Rover sounds like a dog, but we'll find out. This one, it says The Secret of Rover, but I don't see a dog on the cover, so we're going to have to see what this is. Okay, uh, The Secret of Rover is actually a secret. We don't find out till the very end what Rover actually is. It is a secret project. This story is about a boy and girl twins and their parents have been kidnapped because they have an invention called Rover. So they have to make their way across several states by themselves and some criminals are after them and they have to find their uncle who is a recluse to get him to help them. This to me has a little bit of a Spy Kids kind of feel to it and I enjoyed this a lot. It's a contemporary book but it's definitely an adventure book that will, I think, keep you on the edge of your seat. It is a very good, um, entertaining book with a lot of action. Do you like spy stories? Would you like to become a spy? <laughs> this might be one for you. This is from Sam Red. <laughs> I wonder if the red is his truck that he's standing on. This is by Katherine Erkskin. Okay, let's hear about that. Well, Red is actually the boy, and he's got red hair, and Red was also the nickname of his great-grandfather, I believe. So, um, he fixes cars. He learned how to fix cars from his father. His father has passed away recently. This story is historical fiction. It takes place in 1972. So, in the state of Virginia, which is where the book takes place, uh, Red has to deal with the racial tension of the area, as well as one neighbor in particular who is very difficult to deal with and um, also he's dealing with the fact that he's just lost his father and his mother just wants to sell everything the automotive shop the store that they own and move and so it's his struggle with coming to terms with that trying to get his mother to not sell so that they can stay where they are um, so it's uh, it's a very good book and um, I think I enjoyed it a lot as an adult because I lived through 1972 maybe then middle schoolers might, but if you are a middle schooler that enjoys historical fiction, then this is definitely a very good book for you. <laughs> Read and find out what his real name is and see what kind of issues he has to deal with. Okay, now this is another one. Oh, this is a popular author here. Hey, this is Skink No Surrender by Carl Hyacinth. Oh, he has had books on the Sunshine State Young Readers list before. Let's hear about this. Yeah, well, and I've mentioned Carl Hyacin on my channel before because he's one of our Florida authors, and this is his fifth book for young readers. My daughter and I actually listened to this on audio, and we both enjoyed it. This is a very good, fun, adventurous tale that takes you through Florida uh, on a rescue mission. And uh, Skink, our title character, um, if you have read any of Carl Hyacin's books for adults, Skink is one of the recurring characters in those books. And so now he is making his debut in a young adult book. So it's a lot of fun, and I think that um, you will enjoy this book. And it, it's not just for people who are from Florida. This is a really fun book that I think anyone would enjoy. You will find some humor in it, I'm quite yes. sure, along with some of his other books. These are must-reads. If you have not read any of his books, you have got to do it. Yeah. Okay, we have another one. Can you imagine? Stung. Can you see that? Oh my goodness. I would not want to be stung by anything like that. This is stung by Bethany Wiggins. Tell yes. us about it. And if you can't see, this is a bee, but it also has a hypodermic needle. And you find out in the story what that's all about. This is a dystopian tale about um, that's kind of uh, futuristic. It starts out, a girl wakes up and she has no memory of where she is. And she realizes that she's in her home, but everything is a mess. Everything looks like it's much older and ruined than when she last remembers it. And um, then people are after her. She jumps out her window and takes off running and has to find a safe place. So um, it is a very good book and it also has a sequel called Cured that I'm about to read. I just finished this book last night. It's a very good book. If you like dystopian, post-apocalyptic type stories, then this is definitely a good book for you. Yes, so this sounds really interesting. And you know, I did not realize that it had a needle at the end of that. Whoa, maybe you get stung in more than one way. Okay, this is Tesla's Attic. Do you have an attic? Some people do. I think just about everybody in Florida has an attic. This is by Neil Schusterman. Tell us about this. Yes, it's by Neil Schusterman and Eric Elfman. This is the one I'm currently reading. I'm about half through it. And the um, 
main character has just moved into an old, rundown uh, Victorian home that has an attic, and they find a lot of junk in the attic and decide to have a yard sale. So the yard sale draws a lot of people, and they're just buying up all of this so-called junk, and it's just weird how they're all drawn to all these items. Well, then we find out there's something mysterious about all the items. This book I would classify as magical realism. It's a contemporary setting, but with some magical elements to it. Okay, like magic books? You like adventure. It has yeah. all kinds of crazy things in there. This would be a good one for you. Okay, now we have another one here. The testing. And I don't think they mean taking a test <laughs> in school. And this is a testing by Joelle Charbonneau. Let's hear what this is about. It looks mysterious. Well, I have not read this yet, but according to the synopsis, it is also a dystopian series, um, a post-apocalyptic uh, dystopian series about a group of high schoolers. When they finished high school, they are able to be tested uh, as to whether they could qualify to go on to the university and become part of the group that are rebuilding the nation. They're, there's, you know, everything's gone wrong and so they're trying to find the best of the best and it says even on the back of the book there are some questions and one of the questions is, um, well, can, you, can the candidates refuse their nomination? No. Participation is, um, is mandatory. It says, is the testing safe? And they said, well, no comment on that. So uh, apparently, just because you're being tested doesn't mean that you're going to survive the testing. And you are not allowed to get out of the testing if you're selected. So it sounds like it's going to be a good uh, uh, dystopian book that's mysterious with a lot of interesting twists and turns. Would you like our nation to be redone? I don't know. We don't know how it might happen. Look at this one. This is a journal, and it even writes like a journal on the inside. This journal belongs to Ratchet. Okay, this is written by Nancy Cavanaugh. Do you keep a journal? Some people keep journals. It would be a good thing if you did. Let's see what was in her journal. Well, I have not read this one either, but one of our other parents from our school said that her son has read it, and it was a very quick read. It is about a girl named Rachel, whose nickname is Ratchet. Her father is a car repairman and has given her the nickname Ratchet. She's homeschooled, and she's very unhappy about the fact that she has only secondhand things. They have all secondhand furniture, secondhand clothes, and she um, gets this journal that she is able to write in and talk about her her feelings. Um, she has some guidelines she's supposed to follow, but um, I think from what I read a little bit of in the first bit, she decides that she's going to write what she wants to write in her journal. And it, so it's when you open the book, it's just you're reading her journal, basically. Okay, you know what? She has a lot of secondhand stuff, and she doesn't like the secondhand thing? No. I wonder what she would be like if she had no furniture at all. <laughs> Secondhand furniture. Oh my goodness. I don't want to say this, but what if she had no clothes? <laughs> secondhand clothes. I think she clothes. better think about this a little bit more. Okay. This is twerk. Look like somebody splashed something out there by Mark Goldblatt. Tell us something about this one. Well, I have not read this one yet either, but it looks like it's about a boy who has made some mistakes and his school, he and his friends have been in detention during uh, some of the winter months and his uh, counselor has told him that he can write a journal to help make amends for what he did. And I don't know what he did yet, I haven't read it yet, but um, it, it starts out on the back, so he's saying he's not a bully, he just made a mistake. And so we're gonna get to hear about what kind of mistake he made. You know, it would be pretty good to write down a lot of things. When you write, you write your feelings about things and you will never imagine what will come out of you. You have really done an awesome job with these oh, books. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, so now, I think it's really neat. I'd like to share with my uh, viewers what you do at our school to encourage the kids to read this. Now, I have been calling these the Sunshine State Young Reader Award nominees, and that's a really long title. At our school, we refer to these as the Book Bowl books. So tell us about Book Bowl. Oh, yes, the Book Bowl. You don't bowl with a ball. Okay, <laughs> what we do, we put the kids in, we ask the kids to read the books. And we put them in a group of four people, and they have a team where they're going to answer questions about the books. But you know what? They get points for doing this, and they have points where they could use them to spend things on various items. 
Well, at the end of the school year, we have an auction, and that's what they use the points for. But you know what's so important, what they like about this the most? F-O-O-D. Do you know what that? Food. Well, where does food come in? Do they throw food at the books? Oh, no. Every book, they serve some food inside of every book. And we serve the food at our book bowl, and the kids have a blast. They enjoy it, and they get points. They learn to read various kinds of literature, and they enjoy reading. So you know what? That would be a great thing. Have some kind of reward, especially for middle schoolers. They say middle, middle schoolers don't like to read. I have to tell you that is not true because our middle schoolers, they read and read and read. We have a family of readers at our school. They do. There are a couple of students that set their goals to read all the books, not just three or four, and they do it too. Um, and speaking of food, I have to tell you, when as I've been reading some of these, I've been telling my daughter a little bit about some of the food, and the first few books I read, it seemed like there was a lot of uh, grilled or boiled fish. In one book, there was a stew and vegetables, and she said, you're just making it worse, stew and vegetables. Oh, you're going to have was, to write that down. She was happy to find out that in one book there are pancakes and also chicken nuggets. So, <laughs> and a couple of books I have read, uh, they eat pizza. So there are, there's a, a nice wide range of food that we'll have at the feast this year. We have one book that has Skittles in it. Not from this group, but from the last kids year. really enjoyed it. So whatever food is in the books, that's what we find. And our kids, they want to eat and read. So when they're reading, they're thinking about, I'm going to have some food, and I will also have a chance to win some prizes. So just come on and read them all. We want you to enjoy them. Yeah, and um, if you want to comment down below, if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. And also, I will put in the description the Goodreads page for each of these books, as well as my videos of uh, each of my individual reviews for the books. As I upload those, I will add those to the description. So, I guess that's about it. Thank you so much, Miss T, for joining oh, me today. I appreciate you. it so much. You have been reading like crazy. <laughs> like I said, we're a family of readers, and she has been reading them. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to finishing them. And then I plan to read the Sunshine State readers for the third to fifth grade um, age. And there are another 15 books on that list. So I'm planning to read those as well. But I've got five more of these to read. And so that will be, that's my TBR for the next week or two. But um, I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And come back and watch the review videos as soon as I get those posted. So I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book. And God bless you. Oh, yes. Bye.